Kettleman Sports Special, the Sanford International. Now, here's Travis Fossing and Bailey Millen. Our live Kelloland Sports Special, Sanford International. I'm Travis Fossing. And I'm Bailey Millen. Thanks for joining us. We're here at the Mini Haha Country Club, where a week of festivities, events, and of course, golf tees off today for the Sanford International. 78 professional golfers will be taking to the course on Friday with a $1.8 million purse up for grabs, and a lot of the pros already here preparing for the tournament. Over the past several weeks, Kelloland News has been talking with tournament officials to figure out what it took to bring this international event here to Sioux Falls. We'll have several of several stories showing you just how it was done. First up, Kelloland Sammy B. Elland shows us just how big of an undertaking this is and why so many volunteers are needed to help keep things running smoothly throughout the week. An event this large takes a lot of work and people to make it run smoothly. We decided to talk with some volunteers to find out what they'll be doing during the tournament and how they're helping to make the Sanford International a success. The greens are prepped and ready for golfers. Now all they need are people to help make the Sanford International Tournament operate. Uh, it's, as you can see, there's so much going on with the course and everything, and uh, we need as much help as we can get, and these volunteers are super excited to help us out and join in on all the fun. Tournament and volunteer coordinator Mackenzie Swenson says there will be about 1,000 volunteers out on the course at the Minnehaha Country Club. They'll be doing everything from driving around patrons to serving as marshals. They are the people that try to keep the crowd quiet when golfers are putting or driving. Uh, they are assistant as to where are things on the course. Uh, it's just an all-around information person and helpful person. Steve Hoff is a volunteer and co-chair for the Marshall Committee. For the last 12 years, Hoff and his wife have been traveling the country helping with tournaments like the one coming to Sioux Falls. At this event, volunteers will be paying to take part. It is $65 per person to work on the greens. You get a nice polo, a jacket, a hat, along with some other things like a nice commemorative pin and breakfast and a couple other things, plus the experience that you get. You also get admission into the tournament every day with your volunteer credentials. All of this work is to help make this an experience guests will never forget. Events like this have been going on all over the place, and these players, best players in the world, are coming here to play, and everybody just wants to see a little bit of what they can do, and it's, you know, quite the event to be a part of. What's the secret to having a smooth running tournament as volunteers? Be patient. It's the, the hardest thing is to say, you know, just be flexible, be patient, do whatever you can to make people happy, put your smiling face on, and have a good time. Hoff says even though he's not much of a golfer himself, he is excited to see what the golfers can do here in Sioux Falls. At the Minnehaha Country Club, Sammy Bieland, Kelloland News. I'm Matt Holson, standing here next to the 18th hole here at the Minnehaha Country Club. This golf course has been around since 1922. For more than a year, the course superintendent and his staff have been busy getting it ready for the Sanford International. David Swift is the man in charge. He's been the superintendent at Minnehaha for 10 years. Do you feel any pressure? Um, I feel, yeah, a little bit. I mean, you do because you got so much stuff um, that you want to complete. And, you know, our expectations are pretty high. So we've got our own agenda. Superintendents have their own agenda with growing grass. So we want to get everybody else's stuff out of the way so we can get back to what we do. Leading up to the Sanford International, Swift worked with PGA officials to improve sight lines and lengthen the course more than 6,700 yards. While the golfers will be challenged by eight new tee boxes at the club, Swift spends his time dealing with the ever changing Kelloland weather. Yeah, we're always trying to fight, fight the weather. Mother Nature's in charge, and we just kind of let her do her thing, and then we clean up afterwards. He says high humidity recently has created problems growing grass in the rough. He's confident his crew of more than a dozen will stay on top of any issue and present a course locals can be proud of. While he's still getting over the initial shock of hosting this big event, he says it's something the club has been preparing for over the years. Minnehaha is a busy place every day. So, um, yeah, I guess looking back, maybe it wasn't so surprising, but I was a little bit at first. 
Swift says his favorite hole on the course is the par 3 17. We'll see what the pros think when they come for the Sanford International. At Minnehaha Country Club, I'm Matt Holson. As we just showed you, the Greens and the Minnehaha Country Club have undergone a multi million dollar renovation. This is a time lapse from our Kelloland Skycam of the clubhouse next to the 18th hole, showing the work over the last few months as crews changed the 18th hole and constructed the chalets. As you can see, this was quite the undertaking for the facility and the Greens as crews worked round the clock to get everything ready for the Sanford International. The renovations to the country club were originally supposed to be done next year, but once the tournament was announced, everything had to be pushed up. Kettleland's Don Jorgensen takes us on a tour inside the facilities to see what's changed. I'm here at the Minnehaha Country Club where they've done about eight and a half million dollars in renovations and with me now is the CEO Ted Thee. Ted, thanks for being here. Uh, talk a little bit about all the renovations that have sure. happened here. Well, the the Minnehaha Country Club, as you know, is 113 years old. This clubhouse uh, was built in 1965 and actually only had one remodeling to it before 2012. In 2012, we did the lower level and we've done the entire upper level and a lot of the lower level uh, with this renovation. And uh, we just think uh, it's such an iconic figure in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. It deserves a huge facelift. Everything on the first level from floor to ceiling has been totally renovated. We've added on some roofing features, just trying to make sure that we embrace this building that's been here since 1965. Uh, right to your left, you can see uh, the beautiful light fixture there uh, that, that we call the feature. We, we put a special window in to make sure that everybody that came in the front door got to see that light feature. And some of these renovations, as I understand it, were planned anyway, yes. but they were moved to, moved up because of the Sanford International. Sure. Well, we were actually going to start in October of this year after the Sanford International, but uh, we had a little partnership agreement and we thought, well, uh, we got together with uh, Henry Carlson and talked to them a little bit and they said they could do it and we figured we could do it, so uh, we, we did it in a short period of time. Now we're in the newly remodeled dining area for the members and before we talk about this, talk about the uh, elevator that was put in. Sure, well, um, as we're all getting a little bit older and our membership's getting a little bit older, we put an elevator in just to ensure that the members could get to both levels. This area is, uh, is uh, a white tablecloth area. There aren't a lot of white tablecloth areas, uh, dining areas in Sioux Falls. Uh, we think that it's important. There's a certain group of our members that would love to have that, love to have that uh, little bit of privacy, but not too much. At Minnehaha Country Club, the members all want to see each other. So as you can see, uh, there are closed off areas, but still they can still see who everyone is. This is actually a uh, it will be a wall of wine. We're just getting the refrigeration in, so uh, all of those airline wires will be filled with uh, bottles of wine. Uh, from the top to the bottom. Wow, it's so impressive. And speaking of wine, the bar has been moved. Yes, yeah, 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 that's everyone who walks in says they're worried about the bar. Well, the bar is in a, in, in a new location, much bigger uh, to be able to take care of uh, our, our, our younger membership. Our membership has gotten a lot younger over the years. And finally, we're here at the newly added deck to Minnehaha Country Club. Talk about it, too. Uh, well, the, the, the deck was uh, very high in our surveys as well. And as I told most of the members, uh, if you look at it, uh, this is the second best view in South Dakota. The other one's got four faces on it. It's a great space. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. Ted, thanks for uh, giving us a tour yeah, of the you, newly renovated Minnehaha Country Club. Thank you very much. We're just getting started with our Kelloland Sports Special, Sanford International. Coming up after the break, meteorologist Scott Munt takes a look at how the forecast is shaping up for the tournament and what plans are in place in case of rain. We're back right after this.
Welcome back to our Kello Land Sports Special, Sanford International. I'm Bailey Millen. And I'm Travis Fossey. Weather is everything here in South Dakota and will likely play a role in this week's Sanford International Golf Tournament. So what happens if it rains? If it's raining Wednesday and Thursday, that's not as big of an issue since players will just be practicing, but they may not be able to practice as much. Rain on Friday through Sunday could be a bigger issue. Now the golfers still can play in the rain, but if things get bad, the storms come around, things could be delayed a few hours or even until the next day, though the tournament will end on Sunday. So what are we expecting for weather this week? Here's meteorologist Scott Munt. Leading up to the Sanford International, we had two weeks of warm and mostly dry weather, but that will soon change. Much cooler air will move in this week, which will result in afternoon highs in the 60s and lower 70s, which isn't far off from the climate average of 71 on Friday, the start of the tournament. Since 1990, the average highs in Sioux Falls during the three-day tournament of the 21st to 23rd have been in the 60s 50% of the time and 70s 29 percent of the time. The two extremes of having highs in the 80s or 50s are even at 10.5 percent. Unfortunately, after nearly two weeks of dry weather, rain is back in the forecast. On any given day in September, there's around a 25 percent chance for measurable rain. <laughs> Climate research shows us that the chances for heavy rain drastically go down for September 21st through the 23rd. It's around 20% to get more than a tenth of an inch, 5% more than a half inch, and just 2% chance for amounts over an inch. So while rain can delay the action, for it to cancel the tournament seems low. Heavy rain usually falls with thunderstorms, but they don't happen as often in the fall. Sioux Falls averages around eight days with thunderstorms during the fall months. After a look at the climate stats for three days, here's a look at how this year will pan out. The highest chance for rain will be at the beginning of the week with things drying out closer to the start of the tournament. As for temperatures, they'll be close to average. Saturday may end up being the warmest day with highs in the 70s. And the one thing we'll have to monitor is the ever so popular South Dakota wind. Looks like we could have wind gusts in the least 20 to near 30 mile per hour range at the beginning and at the end of the tournament. For Kelloland Weather, I'm meteorologist Scott Munt. There's still more to come on our Kelloland Sports Special Sanford International. Coming up next, I'll show you which big names will be here, and Sean Bauer will talk about some of the signature holes to keep an eye on during the tournament. And I'll have an up close look at the Sanford International Tournament trophy and its significance to Sioux Falls. We'll be right back. PGA Tour Champions was founded in 1980 and has 27 official events on this year's schedule, including the inaugural Sanford International. Sioux Falls will remain on the tour schedule through at least 2022, allowing local fans an opportunity to rub shoulders with some of the world's best golfers. Good look there from Bernhard. This is a nine iron. Good the PGA Tour Champions is set to unleash 78 professional golfers on Minnehaha Country Club. I would say the Champions Tour is sort of a reprieve. It's, it's the opportunity for the greatest players in the world to continue to compete past the age of 50. The list of veteran golfers features several former major champions, including one of the most colorful characters in PGA history. The fans are probably most excited about John Daly. He's just like the guy's guy, right? He's just, he's like our neighbor, you know, just the good guy. He just was going hunting or, you know, went to the bar and had a, had a beverage and just the guy you want to hang out with. We'll play the guitar a little bit with you and tell stories. So he'll be a lot of fun. But the other thing that's really cool is we have guys like Steve Stricker, who still is extremely competitive on the regular tour. He's still playing in 10, 12 events on the regular tour. Captain on the Ryder Cup team. We've got Tom Lehman, who used to be a captain on the Ryder Cup team. We definitely have a who's who of, of the tour. Right now, we have about 38 of the top 40 players over 50 in the world coming here to Sioux Falls. It's cliche, it's part of the, the PGA Tour's slogan, but these guys are good. We are going to see some outstanding golf out here. I wouldn't be surprised if we see uh, some, some numbers in the low 60s every day. Strategy will go a long way in determining who hoists the Sanford International Trophy on Sunday. But they think from the green back to the tee box. Uh, they think about being in the best position to make a birdie. Uh, most casual golfers like myself, we get on the tee and see, see how far we can hit it. Uh, but these guys, they think backwards, uh, and it allows them to play the game in a different way than what we typically play it. 
Champions Tour players haven't lost their competitive edge, but unlike the PGA Tour where it's all business, there's a balancing act between competing and entertaining. Yes, we're all here watching them in their office, but they want to engage. They're going to invite you into their office. They say, yeah, let's chat a little bit. We're on the regular tour. You're going to, you're going to keep an arm's length. So I would encourage people to, to be boisterous, to be enthusiastic, to, to reach out, to come get autographs, to take pictures. Uh, you, won't, you won't be disappointed with the reaction from these players. Oneida native Tom Byram will hit the first competitive tee shot of the tournament coming up at 10:45 Friday morning. The 54-hole tournament runs through Sunday. Kettleland Sean Bauer has some of the signature holes for the inaugural Sanford International. I'm Sean Bauer, joined by Minnehaha head pro Mickey Finn, and we're here to take you through the signature holes of Minnehaha Country Club for the Sanford International. And it all begins with hole number one. So, Mickey, what's going to be the key here to the first hole for the players? Well, I think uh, keeping a tee shot in the fairway, probably at about 200 yards, or if they want to try and test it, hit one about 275 to clear Skunk Creek. Laying up will leave a low to mid iron into the green, while clearing the creek will leave a wedge. Regardless of strategy, birdie is the goal on hole one. The seventh hole is being played as a par four with players teeing off from an elevated box. Most shots will land near the bunker on the left side of the fairway, where our next key shot takes place. Most most of the players are going to be left with about a 185 yard shot. They will flirt with this bunker off the tee, but uh, it's a tightly guarded green uh, by five bunkers and uh, kind of test their abilities. The par 5 12th hole is one of the most scenic with players hitting from the tee box atop the hill. The pros will be thinking birdie or better, but their second shot into the green will determine their fate. There's threes or sevens on this hole. And you're going to see a lot of guys that are going to try and really shape a long, long club, whether it be a hybrid or a three wood, and they're going to try and shape that ball in there and they're going to hit that thing right down Skunk Creek. The other par five on the back nine will also play a major factor throughout the tournament. Players will again be thinking birdie or better on 16, and if they find the fairway, it'll be go time on their second shot. We're right at 250 yards, and one of the things that you'll find is most of these players can all hit the ball 250, so now it's just trying to make sure that they they hit it into one of those bunkers or somewhere around the green and, and hopefully turn this par 5 into a, a par 4 and make a birdie. The par 3 17th has a stadium-like feel surrounding the hole. The goal is to avoid bogey, so missing correctly is key. The chalets and the skybacks is, is really the big thing. Uh, this is a d double tier green, so you want to make sure you're on the, the right side of the hole uh, for this shot. On the closing hole, landing a tee shot in the fairway will be vital, but the approach into the final green could determine who wins the Sanford International. Keeping it between all the chalets, I think, is the biggest thing that uh, we'll see. Uh, again, another uh, two tier green, so being on the correct tier is going to make a big difference in their ability to make birdie. That does it for our tour of the signature shots for the Sanford International. I'd like to thank Mickey Finn and Minnehaha Country Club for hosting us. Mickey, anything else left to say? Well, it was our pleasure hosting you, and uh, we're, we're very excited for the Sanford International coming up on uh, September 21st. All right, you heard it from him reporting from Minnehaha Country Club, Sean Bauer, Kelloland Sports. Thank you, Sean. Whoever can master those signature holes, as well as the rest of the course here at the Minnehaha Country Club, will walk away with the state-of-the-art Sanford International Tournament Trophy. Now, this isn't just any ordinary tournament hardware. I spoke with Greg Conrad about the significance of the trophy to the city of Sioux Falls and this event. It was a collaboration basically between Cambria, who's our presenting sponsor, and Malcolm DeMille, who's a renowned artist out of California. This inaugural Sanford International Trophy weighs more than 40 pounds due to the heavy nature of Cambria. My biggest fear, quite frankly, is that the player will drop the trophy. It's heavy. Each year, the trophy will look slightly different than the year before, thanks to small imperfections on the stone, similar to marble. We call it our 40-pound snowflake, so every trophy will be unique. Every trophy we give to a champion will be slightly unique, slightly different. The trophy also features a metal globe breaking its way out of the stone. It was sort of like, hey, this is, this is a, a new thing, kind of like cracking your way out of an egg kind of thing. So in this, the trophy was kind of cracking its way out of the Cambria. From the globe standpoint, uh, certainly the Sanford International, I think Sanford wanted to make sure that the world recognized that, uh, you know, Sanford's an international company, but so can Sioux Falls can be an international company, right? However, this trophy won't be traveling internationally. The champion will raise this trophy on Sunday, but a smaller version will be sent to the winner.
So we'll have a trophy that will live here in Sioux Falls and it'll live in our town and as we get more and more champions we'll have the champions around the trophy just like a Stanley Cup so or a PGA Championship trophy where you see all the names of all the winners. And this weekend's champion will be the first to see his name on the inaugural trophy at the Sanford International. Coming up in our final segment of the Kelloland Sports Special, Sanford International, this event isn't just about golf, how it's also benefiting local charities. Plus what you need to know before heading out to the tournament, coming up after the break. The sport of golf is never far away from Sanford Health. This is an actual putting green located in front of the Sanford House, which is headquarters to the Sanford Foundation. Each year, the foundation raises millions of dollars to help patients around the world, and thousands of dollars raised during the Sanford International will be directed to the foundation. It's incredibly important. It's great impact. The Sanford Foundation will receive most of the donations from the golf tournament. Some of the money will go to help the young patients and their families at Sanford Children's Hospital to help pay for 10 child life specialists. The job of those child life specialists is to not only educate those families and their patients, also their siblings of their disease, their illness, um, and their treatments, but also to provide that emotional support. The rest of the money will go to Sanford's World Clinic Initiative to help patients in the West African nation of Ghana with medical services we in the United States sometimes take for granted. Basic needs like uh, hydration and maternity care, um, wound care, uh, it, it's really basic in, in the country of Ghana, uh, something different than we expect here at Sioux Falls, in Sioux Falls at Sanford Children's. The Sanford Foundation anticipates charitable donations from the tournament will run at least into the tens of thousands of dollars. The money will stretch a long way spent on patient care locally and globally. As title sponsor of the event uh, and understanding the need with patient care and the services that are delivered here um, and, and the work that philanthropy can do and impact that the services here at Sanford, uh, it just it's a natural fit. Two miracle kids from the Sanford Children's Hospital will be taking part in Friday's opening ceremonies for the Sanford International. Reporting from the putting green here at the Sanford House, I'm Perry Groton, Kelloland News. Thank you very much, Perry. The Sanford International is expected to draw between 60 and 80,000 fans over the course of the week here at Minnehaha Country Club. So here are a few things you need to know before heading out here to the course. A daily grounds pass Wednesday and Thursday is $15 per person. Friday through Sunday, it's $25. For a three-day action pass, it's $60. Officials encourage you to buy your tickets online, over the phone, or at ticket outlets. Tickets will be available at the gate. However, they will cost you more money. Also, remember to park at the WH Lion Fairgrounds and board a shuttle to get to the tournament. Shuttles will be running all day between the fairgrounds and the country club. Well, the Sanford International basically off and running. Some of the players were out on the course today, hitting some balls in the driving range, and that list included John Daly. Yeah, we spoke with John Daly on the driving range this morning, and you'll hear from him coming up tonight at 10 on Kelloland News. As for now, that's a wrap for our Kelloland Sports Special, Sanford International. And Kelloland News will continue our coverage from the tournament throughout the course of the week, all leading up to the Sanford International beginning Friday and running through Sunday. Thank you very much for joining us for this Kelloland Sports Special, Sanford International. Have a good night.